Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we're discussing a pretty exciting development, which could hopefully see Gilliman facing off against the Silent King. No real need for a spoiler warning today as we're just discussing some things that are hopefully going to be happening. However, I'll throw out a general spoiler warning just in case, as we'll no doubt be referencing events from across the lore. However, with that said, let's waste no more time and just jump straight in. Now yesterday, I hit the shops bright and early to get the weekly food shop out of the way, and was pleasantly surprised to see the new white dwarf ready and waiting on the shelf. To be honest, I really should just subscribe as I always buy it, but I don't know, it's just that nice feeling grabbing it off the shelf, you know? Anyway, sitting down to read over the morning coffee, I was very excited to see a development regarding a certain Rebute Gilliman. Now, a few weeks back, we discussed how we'd finally received an update on the Silent King. How he had finally been sighted returning to take control of his Nexus project. The Nephilim Anomaly as the Imperium knows it. The Imperium's fight back, combined with Faron politicking, had caused Sarek's grand plan to stall in its progress, and so he returned to give his forces a much needed kick up the backside. And it's safe to say it was a bit of a kick. With a flagship the size of a moon, and the force of his dynasty unleashed, the Silent King had begun absolutely decimating the Imperium's forces. Despite what appears to be a bit of trouble amongst the Pharons regardless, as let's be honest here, Necron Pharons will always exploit any opportunity they can, the Silent King got his plan back on track. At least as far as we're aware. It certainly felt that Sarek was going to be far more hands-on and involved moving forward. And so, well, that brings us to today. In this month's White Dwarf, we get a glimpse of the Imperium's response to the overwhelming Necron Offensive. And this is what I love about White Dwarf when it gives us these insights into the wider galaxy. What's really going on within the Imperium? you really feel like you're learning something for the first time. It's a very interesting read, just how the Sons of Dawn go about fighting back against the Necrons. A lot more in depth than I was expecting it to be. However, one of the real takeaways of this for me is that the Imperium, and in particular the Astartes, are beginning to realize just how powerful a tall faith is. As we know, the Necrons in Priak Nexuses, as they call them, combat the effects of the warp. And this makes any form of psychic or astropathic communication virtually impossible, smothering the power completely. However, here, the Imperium is so desperate to get a call out for reinforcements that they gather together as many psychers as they can and they do it upon a world blossoming in its faith. A world enforced by the sisters of the Adeptus Sororitas, where the effects of the anomaly appear weaker. Now, not only does this reinforce the notion of the God Emperor, with faith in him truly being the Imperium's most powerful asset now, but it really appears to show, or at least hint, that even the Astartes are struggling to deny the obvious now, the clear link between faith in him and psychic power. Of course, yes, in the grand scheme of things, this is just a small event, but it's yet another example of how key the Emperor's awakening has become. How, yes, the Cicatrix Maldictum might have been Chaos's biggest victory, but in an ironic way, it could turn out to be the Imperium's, as there is absolutely no doubt it has allowed the gift of faith to become a weapon. The Imperium's greatest weapon. The more we move forward in the narrative, the more and more I think we'll see faith truly becoming a weapon for the Imperium. 
something that we know as of the end of Godblight, even Gilliman is having to face. Now, as for Gilliman, after the great description of the Imperium's fight back, we get an absolutely tantalizing tease, clearly setting us up for the future. Gilliman aboard his flagship is in his private chambers going through the never-ending tide of reports. Until that is, he lays eyes on the message from the Nephilim anomaly. And it's only a few key words they've managed to get out, but it's enough to stop Gilliman in his tracks. Now the message talks of the warp stilling and the anomaly growing, with a reference to some form of unifying presence for the Xenos. However, there's one key word that strikes Gilliman's attention. Faith. Faith is the word that stops Gilliman in his tracks because he knows the manner of the man it comes from. He appointed him to this task. And you have to think it strikes a chord with Gilliman given his own thoughts on the matter, his growing concerns with his father. We then see Gilliman searching through a bunch of reports, and you get the impression that Gilliman is beginning to realize the scope of the problem and it then leaves us with the tease of Gilliman setting course for the subsector. So, for my mind, this is clearly building to an almighty confrontation between Gilliman and the Silent King. Arguably the two greatest strategic minds alive in the galaxy. Sorry, Perturabo. Oh, this has me excited. Now, will Gilliman and Sarek come face to face? Does Gilliman even know of him? I'm sure from Imperial reports he knows of a necron Silent King, but how much does he know of the reality? I've got to think this could be a big surprise if the two do have an interaction. Which surely they've got to, right? The Silent King introduced as the Lord of the Infinite Empire, ruler of the galaxy, with the inevitable response of there is only one ruler of the galaxy, and that is the emperor of mankind. While I'm not too sure how much Gilliman may know of Sarek, let alone his intentions, I am absolutely sure Sarek knows of Gilliman. And that's because, as we've discussed before, we have seen him speak of Sanguinius. Sarek, in speaking with Dante, made reference to Sanguinius being wise, and though it was most likely an attempt at winning Dante and the Blood Angels over, in that particular situation, there is of course the possibility Sanguinius did have at least some form of interaction with the Silent King. Admittedly, it is unlikely though, Regardless, it shows Sarek had knowledge of Sanguinius, and thus the Primarchs, so I think it's highly likely he knows of Gilliman. This is two of the biggest names currently active in the lore. It is a big, big deal. Maybe it's wishful thinking on my part, and hey, this is me we're talking about, so that is absolutely certain. But I really think this is going to build up to a conversation between the two. I mean, surely it has to. I don't know how law-altering it can be, as when last seen novel-wise it really felt like Gilliman was all in on his invasion across the rift. But hey, who knows? It's not like Gilliman was expecting to find this out as the Imperium's only real hope, he has to respond to the threats that arise. And it's clear with him setting course for the Nephilim subsector, he's beginning to realize how dire this situation could be. Gilliman knows there's more behind it. So, how is this all going to play out? Who will be victorious? Well, your guess is as good as mine. It's hard to imagine Gilliman coming out the loser, even against one such as the Silent King. Yes, Sarek has the advantage, able to order entire legions in nanoseconds, 
something even Gilliman can't compete with. However, Rabute is no slouch. He's bringing the might of the Imperium with him, whereas Sarek is still regaining control of his empire and still waiting for most of it to wake up. Maybe the intervention of Gilliman will finally end the threat of this particular nexus, putting a major wrench in Sarek's plans. However it does ultimately play out, I'm quite interested to see how the element of faith is going to be involved. If it could be the next step in the Gilliman God Emperor Faith storyline. It's clear with that word being brought up it absolutely has to be involved somehow. So surely we're going to see some kind of development here. Maybe seeing Gilliman finally becoming more accepting of faith or even considering using the Necron technology to combat the effects of his father, preventing the Emperor from acting. We know Belisarius Call is out there somewhere investigating the Necron pylons, so maybe Belisarius is due for an appearance. Whatever transpires, I am excited and very hopeful to see where this is going to lead if we will truly see Gilliman versus Sarek, and just what it means for the Emperor moving forward. But as always everyone, what do you think? Where do you feel this is going to go? Will we see Gilliman and Sarek facing off against each other within the campaign? And will we see some form of interaction between the two? With the element of faith once more being brought up, Will we see some form of development here, when it comes to the God Emperor? Will we see Gilliman starting to become more accepting? Or maybe, will he begin to use the Necron technology against his father? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.